Hi, I'm Dr. Mindy Curry. I'm a naturopathic doctor. I do house calls in the greater Portland area and have a home office in Milwaukee. And I'm here to tell you today about uh, my grandma's lemon balm mocktail. Um, and it's basically highlighting lemon balm here, this lovely herb. Uh, this one happens to be growing out of my, uh, my wall in my garden. Um, so we're gonna get uh, nice up close and friendly with this guy here and then make a lovely beverage out of him. Now, uh, the Latin name for the lemon balm is Melissa officinalis, and Melissa is actually the name, or the, the Greek word for honeybee. And when these are in flower, the honeybees just really love to come in there and take of their joy um, from these little flowers. This is a lemon-scented mint. It's a member of the mint family. Uh, you can tell by the square stems. Uh, you can probably see that, maybe, that it's got very square stems at some point. Um, it's got a very uh, bilateral cemetery, symmetry in the leaves, little, uh, little lovely scallops there. And it's a little bit furry. Um, not so much at this time of the year, but later on when it gets a little bit more mature. This is, this is kind of uh, late spring, early summer. But uh, middle of summer, these will be rather furry and a bit more leatherier. So this is actually a great time to use them in, um, in a variety of ways. Now this is, uh, this is a native to Southern Europe, um, also Asia and Africa, um, but now it grows almost everywhere. Here in the Pacific Northwest where I'm at, um, it kind of grows almost every, every empty field, every crack, every wall especially uh, really sunny locations, especially if they're kind of near water. Um, but this has traditionally been used in food ways, um, as a scent, uh, for skincare products. Um, let's see, and traditionally it's a traditional medicinal as well. This has been used the, as a garnish, say, for salads or cocktails. Um, just because it's lovely and it smells real nice. It can be used as a flavor for jellies or meats. Um, it can be used as a drink in tea. It can be tinctured, also powdered, of course. Um, but this is uh, generally known medicinally for its relaxing and calming effects. It's a, a mellow outer. It's a mild, sedative, a mild sedative, but it does preserve cognitive function pretty well and it's really great for relieving stress. And also something that's good to add into sleep formulas just for that same relaxing effect. Um, this might explain why my grandma used to always give this to me when I was a hyper little kid running around on a hot day, hot sunny day, too hot to be outside. Here, have some of this delicious lemon balm mocktail and uh, calm down, kid. <laughs> um, so, Let's see, what else does it does? It's, it's known to be uplifting for the spirit as it calms the body. And it can also possibly be used energetically to heal a broken heart. So something good for a heartbreak formula. Um, it's also been known to be used for indigestion, gas and bloating can be very soothing for the digestive tract. Um, some of the more recent lab studies suggest that it's actually really great for boosting early immune response. So in some days you might want more immune response <laughs> and uh, this would be one you might want to pop as soon as you think you're getting near something that might challenge your immune system. Start taking some lemon balm. It, if anything else, it'll calm you down and lift you up a little bit emotionally. Um, it also has been used to manage an overactive thyroid gland um, to kind of calm down uh, a thyroid that's having problems with autoimmunity and going out of control. Um, so in this case also, because it's used to treat a hyperactive thyroid gland, an overactive thyroid gland, you kind of want to use maybe a little bit of caution with this one with a low thyroid problem and maybe not have this every day. It would be probably just fine to take an occasional uh, bit of this with your low thyroid, but uh, you would not want to take this all the time if you 
or at least monitor how you're feeling if that's the case. It's generally considered very safe, does not have much of any uh, dangers other than that that are well known. In any case, it's very, it's, like I said, it's in the mint family, um, a real delightful one. We're just going to take and we're going to pick some of these tender bits off. Well, let's take a look at the plant here first while you're here in the garden. See those leaves? Good symmetry. Little scallops. See that uh, square mint stem? The more tender bits at the top are the best for using in a mocktail. And I don't want to go too bad, so I'm going to just get a, a bundle for Grandma's Lemon Balm Calm Down Kid Mocktail. Let's go back into the kitchen and make that and uh, get to sipping it. Because it's, it's a lovely sunny day out here in the Pacific Northwest and time for a little bit of Grandma's Lemon Balm Mocktail. Okay, we're here in my kitchen. Got our lemon balm. Let's uh, wash that off real quick. A lot of birds right above there. You know what I mean? Okay, this one I'm going to preserve over here for later. But uh, basically, you just want to take these off the stem. Now the way my grandma did it is she used a uh, basically a limeade concentrate, a frozen limeade concentrate. She just put that in the blender with a bunch of ice cubes and just enough water and a nice big handful of lemon balm and just blend that all together. Um, but uh, as I've grown older and uh, I don't know about those lemon balm, I mean lemon, <laughs> ah, I don't know about those limeade concentrates anymore. The limeade, lemonade, most of those concentrated juices, they're just all high fructose corn syrup. And I'd rather have, um, frankly, I'd rather have sugar. And we do have here Santa Cruz Organic makes a nice limeade. This is not a concentrate, so what I did is I froze the uh, limeade in an ice cube tray overnight. So now I've got pure Santa Cruz limeade ice cubes. I'm going to make my mocktail with those. So let's get those in there. Come on. I think I had an escape me. Come back, come back. Throw in the lemon balm. And these ninjas, they have this fascinating setting called snow cone. You can actually just put straight ice in there and make the snow out of it. Um, so this probably won't be quite this probably won't be quite snow, but it will be definitely well blended. And if it has any problems, we got a little bit more of this limeade added. Ah. And here's it goes. We're going to put it on the snow cone setting on the ninja. And that actually looks like it's going to need a little bit of liquid in order to get the uh, lemon balm all chopped up. Let's see if that'll do it. Look at 
looks like it's going to take just a little bit more liquid, so I'll throw a little water in there. And that looks pretty good. You want to have all those little lemon balm flowery um, leafy bits all chopped up real good. Um, it's kind of like a mojito. You'll get little chunks of the mint in there. Um, but you don't want them to be too big of chunks. You choke on them. The unpleasant texture. So let's see what we got. snow. Better than the yellow snow. Ah. You make a little snowman there. And of course every mocktail needs a little bit of excitement. How does that look? Is that good for a, a nice little afternoon on the patio or a, at the pool or a little party drink? Oh, oh my God, that is so good. It's just like I remember it, Grandma. It's a uh, lemony, limey, lemon balmy, snow-like. Sweet. Now, one more thing you can do with this, if you just happen to have, I don't know, a little rum lying around. Can knock this up a notch, turn that into a lemon balm daiquiri. Grandma would not approve. Sorry. There it is, my lemon balm daiquiri, or, or Grandma's spiked mocktail. <laughs> it up again. There it is. And I have to say that might even be better. So now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine, I want to remind you that it's very important to go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbals for your conditions. For one thing, you may not really understand what your diagnosis is. You may think it's just a little bit of this and that that can be treated with some plants when it's really something serious and you're missing it and it could, could be fatal. Um, also, there are interactions between herbs and drugs and there's also contraindications between some of the problems you may be having and the herbs you may think you need. <laughs> so don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you're sure what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area. 
and I also have an office in Milwaukee.